All right, so this is gonna be a video about area of a plane region. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna to try to find the area under this curve, this f of x equals x squared, and the interval, the closed interval from zero to two. So I'm gonna to try to figure out how to find the area underneath this curve. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna look at the shape and we go, okay, how can we possibly find the area of something that's a curve like this? And what we're gonna to do to do this, and you can do it in many different ways, the one way we're gonna do it though is breaking this up into simpler shapes. Okay, you might have remembered from geometry, if you have some crazy shape, you can break it up into individual shapes and then just add those areas together. So that's what we're gonna do for this one. And the shape that we're gonna choose is a rectangle, just because it's nice and easy. And uh, to calculate the area of a rectangle, all you have to do is do length times width. So it'll be easy to do the calculations as well. So here we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is try to break this up into rectangles based on a certain amount of interval. Now, how many rectangles are we gonna use? Well, since it's from zero to two, for this first run, I'm just gonna do two rectangles. So I'm gonna do two intervals from here to here. Because it goes from zero to two, I'm just gonna divide them up evenly so we have even widths. So we, have, we should have one rectangle with whose width is one, and the other one is another one. So I'm gonna draw these rectangles in now. Now, from here to here, I'm gonna draw a rectangle that goes up to the curve here, like so, and then over. So this rectangle itself is gonna be a little higher area because it's including this space right here. But again, we're just doing this for simplicity's sake. So we have this rectangle right here, and we would easily be able to figure out the area of that rectangle. Next, I'm gonna do the rest of another rectangle for the rest of the interval here. So I'm gonna make a, and we should be able to figure out the area of this rectangle as well. So this is going to be the upper bound area because as you can see, it has the area underneath the curve, but it also has this extra stuff. So that's the first trial that we're going to do for these two rectangles. The next one we're going to do underneath the curve. So this one's going to be over it. The next one is going to be under it. So to calculate the area of these rectangles, what I'm going to do is set the area equal to length times width of that first interval, this first rectangle here. And then I'm going to add it to the length times width of this second rectangle. Okay, so this first length, you can see right here, it goes from zero to one. So we're gonna do length up and down. Width is, is wide, so we're gonna go left and right. So this first one, this length is going to be, this basically this height from here to here. So I'm just gonna write down f of one, because f of one on the curve, it's one. So I'm just gonna write f of one for my length times the width of this first one, which is just one. So I'm gonna put a little one in here. And I'm gonna add this to the length of this second one. As you can see, it, the length is equal to the f of two. So I'm gonna write f of two times the width here. In this case, the width is one again. Okay, well f of one is easy to calculate for this function right here. f of one is just gonna be one times this one right here to get one, plus f of two, which would be four, because two squared is four, times one, and you end up with one plus four to be equal to five. So this is our upper area. Obviously this is not gonna be, this will, the, the area under the curve is going to be less than five because we have this other part of the rectangles that's, that's, that shouldn't be accounted for, but it is because we use rectangles to try to figure out the area. Now, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to find the area instead of going over the curve, but going under the curve. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so our interval for this is still gonna be two, so I'm gonna write n is equal to two again here. Um, and this time we're gonna make rectangles that are below the curve. Now, we can't actually make a rectangle that's below the curve here because this one goes to zero. So I'm just gonna kind of put a line here just to signify that we can't actually put a rectangle there. So the area of that rectangle is just gonna be zero. But we can make one that goes from here over. Now, as you can see, the area of this is gonna be underneath the curve. So I don't have that over it, but I'm also missing a lot of this over here and this as well, okay? So there is some advantage of going over and there's also an advantage of going under. So we know it's somewhere in between those two numbers. So let's calculate the area of the lower bound. So we have a is equal to length times width of that first rectangle, which really doesn't exist, plus the length times width of that second rectangle, 
which is right here. If you notice, this second rectangle is also equal to that first upper bound rectangle. So that kind of makes their lives a little bit easier. So the length of this first one is going to be zero because it's not raising up at all. The width is one. And like we said before, zero times one, it's just going to be zero because it's not actually a rectangle. The next one right here, our length is one, or it's going to really be F of one, as you can see, because it's based off of this point on the curve right there. It's going to be F of one times the width right here of one. And this is going to be equal to zero plus F of one is one. So I'm going to do one times one. And now I have a total area of one. 1 plus 0 is 1. So we know that this, the area under this curve is somewhere in between 1 and 5. The next video, and I'm going to show you that by changing this, this number of n, the number of intervals, the number of rectangles that we drew in under this curve, is going to change how we actually calculate the area under this curve. So until next time.